Welcome to this week's episode of Trojan Poetry. We are on episode number 32, and it is a continuation of episode number 30 and 31. We are looking at three poems by the poet Lee Young Lee. So uh, one week we looked at the poem called The Gift, <laughs> yeah, then we right. looked at a poem called Eating Alone, <laughs> and this week Chris is already laughing yeah. because we are looking at a poem called Eating Together. Whew. All right. Who to thunk it? <laughs> Lee Young Lee. <laughs> uh, apparently. Hey. All right. In the steamer is the trout, seasoned with slivers of ginger, two sprigs of green onion and sesame oil. We shall eat it with rice for lunch. Brothers, sister, my mother, who will taste the sweetest meat of the head, holding it between her fingers deftly the way my father did weeks ago. Then he lay down to sleep like a snow-covered road, winding through pines older than him, without any travelers and lonely for no one. John, you did it to us. I got nothing. I guess yeah. Lee right, this Lee is crazy did it to us. how good these are. Holy yeah, God. this right? is a direct <laughs> response yeah. yes. to the previous yeah. My, poem. I mean, even the food yeah. choice, the yeah, sesame the oil, the, the onions, same. the 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 ginger, the um, uh, and even just the word slivers. Mm -hmm. uh, going ah, back to the original poem, that. like nice. oh my goodness! Yeah. Now you know why I was so excited yeah. to do yeah, these three poems. Holy cow! Yeah. Wow. Why don't you go first again, Chris? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, Take it away. Well, you know, I got a little... Um, when did you say these were written? Somewhere in like uh, the... Well, he, he was, was born in 57. Born in, yeah, I think so these that. were in the 80s. So, honest, yeah. um, felt a little uh, Frostian ending to it there with the, the snow-covered road. Um, I don't know, that just kind of always gets me there. But um, winding through pines older than him, I, it seems that... Maybe that's a reference to him passing too soon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hard to know. But this, then that, I mean, that, that last four words, the lonely for no one, um, so, you know, perfectly compared to the, the ending of the, the previous poem we looked at, right, where mm -hmm. uh, in my own loneliness, um, what more could I, young man, want? Um, it's like he's come to terms with so much um, and, and has all these people around him that he, you know, that he loves and um, they're able to celebrate, you know, mm -hmm. which is, which is nice. I mean, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it seems like in the previous poem, he was still dealing with his grief right. by himself. He went back out to a place where he and his father had been and he had memories mm -hmm. of him there. And then, and he takes refuge in the food and now he's taking refuge in the rest of his family and yeah. the food. Sorry, John. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it seems like maybe he's, like you said, he's come to terms with it. Although, is it his father that's lonely for no one? He lay down to sleep like a snow-covered road. Lonely for no one. I don't know if he's describing his father's loneliness or his mm. sense of being lonely himself. So, John... I, you know, what I didn't write think? anything on this one because I was just like, it's perfect. Yeah, like, it, like, there was, it's like mic drop. <laughs> Nothing more to say, yeah. yeah if you read done. the previous poem, yeah. then... Yeah, yeah I, go ahead. I, was gonna, I really like the image of he laid down to sleep like a snow-covered road. I mean, that mm -hmm. it's unusual, mm -hmm. but it's perfect. And it, it and then it goes on, winding through pines older than him without any travelers and alone. Like, the, in death, his father is content, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then, which is a, maybe a strange thing. Like you might, some of us, I like like to think, oh, but when somebody dies, they're going to miss us, right? Or, like, yeah. How how does that connection work? And the dad is content in being gone. It seems like in one way to read it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in that meta or the simile there that you point out with the snow covered road, it, I almost missed it. Um, how. how beautiful it is and how different it is because yeah. I so quickly went to snow right. and focused on that being the metaphor for death missing mm -hmm. that it's really how, comparing how he lay down to kind of how once snow covers a road it's peaceful mm -hmm. that no one no one disturbs a snow covered road because it's you can't get to it right mm -hmm. so the complexity of that metaphor similarly you know kind of comparison there was just and that the road keeps brilliant. going yeah like yeah. in death he's still right. kind of traveling mm -hmm. yeah winding through pines it's a verb so he's still in action right. and it seems like he had a peaceful death right he laid down yeah and he went or to sleep. Or in death, he's peaceful, yeah. Right, or right. both, yeah. yeah. Well, I think what's interesting, too, and I think going back and looking at it, too, which, which is, is really nice, um, 
the mom is sort of embracing being the head of the household, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or at least according to the to the son, right? Mm -hmm. and, and through his eyes, we're seeing her um, get the best piece of the meat now, uh, which mm -hmm. dad just got to, you know, a couple weeks ago, right. which uh, is mm -hmm. a, um, for him, if, if we're assuming he's younger, uh, we don't, you know, we don't quite know his age, but he clearly, that's another sign of he's okay with that, right? Mm -hmm. that, that he felt the need for us to know that. And it's just the, de yeah. Yeah, yeah, the detail of weeks ago just hit me. Yeah. I was like, oh man, this is fresh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But there seemed to be moving on, right? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's such a major event, but he's he seems to be moving on yeah. with mm -hmm. his family, right? He, mm -hmm. Whereas, like you said, in the other poem, he was alone, mm -hmm. and he was maybe content. Now he's got his family. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it feels, yeah, he's come to grips with it maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Than in the previous poem. Now, I would also say that this poem actually connects back to the American Cheese poem that we did. Remember mm -hmm. that had the father. Oh yeah, that's Jim right. Jim Daniels. Yeah. Where the father yeah. passed away and the son was thinking about the about food, the cheese, American cheese, and uh, how that well, represented that the their relationship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A lot of relationship stuff. A lot of family yeah. stuff. So maybe go back and look at the American Cheese one too, because well, that would be an Ameri American. Right, Maybe and this one has version. more Asian yes. uh, yeah, and and I, angle to yeah. it. I would just say to anyone out here watching, if, if you love poetry, which I don't know why you'd be watching if you didn't, <laughs> um, the, the, the trio that John has put together here um, for us and that you know uh, Lee has written, um, truly three of the more beautiful poems that I've read once put together. I think any one of them in isolation is a very nice piece, um, but the, the, the narrative that they tell when woven together is... It's it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. wonderful. It reminds me of Spoon River Anthology a little bit. Yeah, that's like sort of connected. Mm -hmm. Once you read more of it, you, it becomes more and more like, whoa! whoa I can't, right. How did he do that? You right. Know? All right, no questions this week. You're off the hook. All right, thanks for watching. Please join the conversation in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at Trojan Poetry DGN. Also, check out our website at trojanpoetrydgn.blogspot.com. <laughs> <laughs>